this uh, question might sound a bit uh, racist, but I want to raise this issue because we have to talk about it without talking about it and uh, sweeping under the rug is not going to help anybody. Um, if you take Islamic uh, extremism, which is pretty much growing all around the world, uh, Sri Lanka as a nation, geographically, we are, we are surrounded by these types of extremism. If you take from Pakistan from one end, you see a little bit uh, in, in India, you have a little bit in Maldives, you have someone uh, in Bangladesh. How do we tackle this? Because that, that ideology, that, 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 that thinking, can very easily trickle down to our countries and our people. I mean, we saw Sahara and all, they were completely misguided by the whole whole uh, faith aspect of it. Um, even last time uh, we, we discussed, uh, uh, Dr. Pratibha Mahanamaheva said that in Islam, in, they never say anything of that sort, but then again, they have changed it as such in order to achieve some kind of a goal, some kind of a target. How can Sri Lanka actively think? Because I think for a very longer period of time, our country, what we've done is we've responded. Instead of being going on the offensive, we've always been defensive about certain things. When the, when the incident occurs, we talk about, but never take action in order to prevent it. What is your opinion on that? In fact, I must share, Mahesh, uh, on that, uh, in that context, my own experience being the governor of the Eastern province. Now, if you take the Eastern province, it has all three communities represented, but the Muslims around 40%, the Tamils around 39%, that makes it about 69%, balance about 21% or 30, about 23% comes to the Sinhalese population. But the concentration of these groups in given geographical locations run into more than 100,000 in a given location, and sometimes the poverty factors mm -hmm. and the deprivation of the fundamental wherewithal for subsistence and succor has contributed largely for people to come and spread various ideologies mm -hmm. and uh, inculcate them into those beliefs. So these beliefs can become sometimes reasonable, sometimes in terms of their own aspirations, and going beyond that, it may trigger going to extremism. So that is the step that we have to avoid. So I think we have to in, uh, have a very inclusive engagement and a totally uh, transparent commitment by the people. We have to do that not for political purposes. We have to really do it for community-related development and for their own well-being. So if we engage them, schooling is one good thing, uh, opportunities in life, is a secondary thing, but equally important. And religious connotations have to be vetted in terms of what we get spread. We're not telling mean just free flow of this extremism. Uh, it's, a, it's a threat to their own lives, to their own beliefs. It's, I would say, uh, Mahesh, it's like uh, improvisation of extremist ideology in terms of what they are meant to believe in terms of their faith. That so right to faith being respected, but it get yes. in, I think, it's like a variant in the COVID. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a variant in COVID. Exactly. So we are tackled the variant very strongly.